back to the channel. We're sitting here once again with Thomas, and we wanted to have a dialogue today about the stem cell industry and where things might go from here. But first off, Thomas, how's your day going? Very well. Thank you, Michael. How's your day? Uh, it's going pretty wonderful so far. It's beautiful outside. Happy to see yeah. the summer. Happy that we can finally get out and do a little bit, right? Yeah, absolutely. Get some exercise, get some fresh air, get some vitamin D. For sure, for sure. I mean, that's uh, that's one of the biggest steps to living healthy. Indeed. True. But, um, getting on to some of the things that can help people get healthy in the future, potentially. Let's talk about stem cell therapy, where it is today and where it can go in the future. So we're seeing stem cells gaining continuous momentum right now. And it, it's interesting to think where things can actually go in the future from here. Can you talk about some of the potential technologies that combine with stem cells or where you see it being in say five to 10 years from now? Sure. So hemostemics is you know, a, an autologous stem cell therapy company, meaning the stem cells come from the patient themselves, the patient's own blood. And uh, we've got a number of studies that are published that I think are worthwhile quickly reviewing uh, to give you a sense of where I think this can go in a broader scope, give you the, the foundational concept mm -hmm. of the safety and efficacy of ACP. And then I'll like to talk about NCP, neuronal cell precursors, and I'd like to talk about BCP, bone cell precursors. Again, other patent, patented products making hemostemics a, pat, a platform technology. Mm -hmm. So the first study of ACP, I'll talk about it in terms of um, critical limb ischemia, then talk about it in terms of um, heart studies that have been done. And I'll talk about a couple of general cases where it has been used to treat ischemia otherwise, as we've treated some 500 patients on a compassionate basis. So let's look at the published studies of ACP, which are on our website, and I invite everyone to look at them in more detail. The first study assessed ACP in six critical limb ischemia patients. Five of six saved their limb from amputation. That's about 80, you know, 85%. The second study uh, randomized 20 patients. 10 received ACP, 10 received a placebo. There were no deaths and seven of 10 patients saved their limbs who received ACP. There were two deaths and six of eight limbs lost to amputation in the placebo arm in that trial. The third study is a randomized double-blind placebo controlled trial. The University of British Columbia's Dr. York Shang and University of Toronto reported to the 41st meeting of vascular surgeons that 83% of the patients they had followed for up to four and a half years had saved their limb from otherwise certain amputation. We have an, now let's move to the heart. The ischemic cardiomyopathy, dilated cardiomyopathy, and angina have all been studied using ACP. The angina trial was a trial of 24 patients who were enrolled and treated with ACP and assessed at one, three, and six months. 20 completed follow-up at three months, 17 completed follow-up at six months. The six-minute walk test uh, improved from 333 meters to 413 meters at six months. Exercise capacity increased from 5.62 metabolic equivalents uh, to 7.09 metabolic equivalents at six months. The mean Canadian cardiovascular score decreased one whole class. This is like uh, nirvana, <laughs> decreasing from 2.1 to 1.18% at six months. And while um, that is you know, a fantastic result in angina, one of the other studies that was done was by uh, Dr. Kit Aram, one of the co-founders of the Minnesota Heart Institute, a thoracic surgeon, world-renowned. He did a study on 41 patients. 21 had dilated cardiomyopathy. 20 had ischemic cardiomyopathy. Average age of 58 in this patient group. The overall ejection fraction, that's the volume the heart pumps, uh, was demonstrated to improve significantly by 4.8 percentage points in the, it increased from 25.9% to 28.7% in the dilated cardiomyopathy group. It increased from 26.6% to 33.6% in the ischemic cardiomyopathy group. I asked Dr. Kit Aram when I met him, uh, you know, Dr. Kit, what do you think? You know, you've, been, you've done thousands of open heart surgeries. Uh, tell me, what, what, what's your assessment of ACP. And this common question I would ask treating physicians, and you know, he he smiled. He said, "This works." Um, then the third heart study 
This is a, a study of 106 patients who averaged 66 years of age who were NYHA functional class three or functional class four. This means you're literally at death's door. These patients had poor left ventricle function and typically had a previous heart attack and two comorbidities. So these are the sickest of the sick patients. They did all, these patients have exhausted all surgical, medical, and pharmaceutical options. Now at one year follow-up, functional in uh, NHO, NYHA functional class improved one whole class. It uh, left ventricle ejection fraction improved from 34 to 39%. And the quality of life survey of these patients, which is a general health and physical functioning survey, improved significantly. So I give you that as a foundation to describe why there is a very real way to license ACP for angina, license ACP for dilated and ischemic cardiomyopathy, license ACP for critical limb ischemia and peripheral arterial disease. Literally, there are nine, we have nine different indications for uh, ischemia that, uh, that are licensable. And let me finish the ACP story with Cal Abo, a nine-year-old boy who had what was called idiopathic pulmonary hypertension. This kid was nine years old, misdiagnosed with asthma um, four times, finally got a diagnosis of idiopathic pulmonary hypertension, including a congenital heart defect. This boy had a, a hole in his heart, and they couldn't operate uh, to repair the hole in his heart because his lung pressures were two and a half times normal. His mother, by the grace of God, found uh, ACP, and they opted because he couldn't do surgery and didn't want to have a heart-lung transplant uh, at age nine, yeah. and opted for ACP. And literally within six months, the cow's lung pressures uh, returned to normal, sufficient that he could get an operation and repair the hole in his heart. And he has... Uh, walked around for eight of the last 10 years medication free. Now he's 19 years old today. He needs another ACP treatment, but there is a whole other indication of uh, idiopathic pulmonary hypertension and COPD. Now that's ACP. And I've just described, you know, five, six licenses. Now take NCP. NCP is, uh, again, uh, I'll talk about an unpublished study that was um, done in the Czech Republic. And uh, I spoke with the, the head of the Stem Cell Institute at the, at, um, at the time. They injected NCP three ways and uh, studied whether the cells ended up at the site of stroke. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, so the cells were injected interstitially into the skin, intermuscularly and intravenously. And regardless of the method of injection, 90% of the cells ended up at the site of stroke and uh, demonstrated that they were producing nerve-like um, factors. Wow. And this is a, um, you know, indicative of the power of NCP. And it's, it's in fact that duplicates that homing to the site of need, embedding at the site of need, and in this case, creating... Um, uh, neuronal uh, like conditions at the site of need is what uh, we see in ACP and what we see in NCP. So again, there, uh, you know, spinal cord injury, PTSD, uh, chronic pain conditions that are nerve related chronic pain conditions uh, are, are possible areas of licensing. So I think what, where I've um, taken that, where I'm taking the company is that we will license uh, each of these indications, and that will that will enable us to, in parallel, develop markets in each one of these indications going forward. Yeah, you know, uh, when you're talking about stem cells, you're not just talking about a product; you're talking about an effect on people who are suffering. And it's it's very real. We're, we are all going to suffer from something eventually. We all we all break down. It's just an accepted part of life. But the technology is now growing, especially in the stem cell field, to ease the pain that we're going through and help with a lot of these problems. Right? Yeah. About to say, uh, like ischemia, 
uh, all those things are very common. It's it's not something that that's that's rare or small thing. Even though there are idiopathic diseases out there, uh, there's a good chance a very large portion of us will have heart problems or have a chance of losing a limb. And being able to bet on stem cells is a very wonderful thing, especially when they're your own. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It seems to eliminate a lot of the risks. It eliminates a lot of the, the moral problems that people have with stem cells. They're your own stem cells and the, the technology is just there now. Yes. And, and we'll be, and we'll be advancing very rapidly. Yeah. I think that's what we're, you know, look at what we've done with the COVID vaccines, you know, taking a, a 10 year process and shrunk it into a year. Uh, it's, yeah. it's phenomenal. And that is, uh, what we're we're going to see in all areas of technology uh, in the next in the in the coming years and, and decades, just going to where you know Moore's law is applicable in more than just uh, com uh, computer science. Yeah, that's a really good point. Technology tends to increase uh, very very rapidly. I guess a parabolic would be a good term for it. Very exponential growth, and uh, yeah. I look forward to see what stem cells turns into in ten years. Absolutely, and it, and and that's apropos the where we started this conversation. You know, with respect mm -hmm. to the the family offices, they're looking for return. They they know that uh, this is the uh, the future, and and uh, you know the capital structures globally have opened up such that companies now have access to capital, and they're able to to uh, develop products in in parallel versus the sequential method of the of uh, the previous capital markets. Agreed. Yeah. People are starting to take notice and uh, stem cells are definitely one of the more interesting things going on right now in the healthcare field. And I would say very large people are now getting involved. They're now watching it. And it's definitely a field that you should take interest in, in my opinion, not investment advice, but thank you, Thomas, for coming on. Thank you for sharing your wisdom on it. And if you guys want to read more, please visit the website. The link is below and stay tuned for more updates. Thomas, have a wonderful day. Likewise. Thank you very much, Michael.